The new LMI side bending machine with its cantilever design is a great way to bend sides for your guitars. LMI has bending molds for a variety of guitar shapes that can be used in the LMI bender. However, if you have a custom shape or size that you need to bend sides for, you're going to need to make your own mold. And let me show you how to do that. You can get a quarter inch MDF template blank from LMI and I'll use this to make a template in order to make the bending mold that I need for my guitar size and shape. So I'm going to need to transfer my custom shape onto this template. Now you can use a set of plans to do that or in my case I've already got an external form and I can place it on here and use this to get the shape onto the template. So with the template blank you'll notice that there's some notched areas here. This is for the waist. So what I'm going to do, there's a notch there and a notch there. I'm going to come in and run that line down like that. That's nine and a quarter inch from the edge here and four and a quarter inch from this edge. This is also the center line of the guitar. So I'm going to place a line going this way as well. Makes it easier to see where the center line is. This is the center line of the guitar and there's also little notches out here on the ends of the template blank to help you reference that. So now I can place my shape over the top. I want my center lines to be aligned here and here and the waist to be aligned with the center line there or the waistline there. And that looks about right. So now I can come in and just trace that on there. So there's the shape I need for my custom shape and the guitar that I'm going to be building. The next thing I'm going to need to do is go to my bandsaw and cut this up as close as I can to the line. I don't want to go into the line. I'll sand up to it later, but I'm going to get as close as I can to that line. You'll notice in the corner of the template there, there's a hole drilled and that's for a reason. So when I cut this out, I want to save this portion of the template. The rest is scrap, but I want to save that. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my drill press and I've got a little spindle sander I'm going to put in there and I'm going to sand this right up to the line all the way around my profile. You can use a sanding block like this to come in and help clean up any edges that might have a little sharp tip on there. And this makes everything nice and round. You can also run your fingers along there and you'll be able to fill if there's any little areas that aren't completely round. If you got a flat spot, you'll be able to fill that with your fingers. Once that's all good, then we'll move to the next step. So here's my template after smoothing up all the edges. And here's that corner piece that I said to save. We're going to need that for our next step. And our next step is to come in and use this template to route other pieces. And we're going to need a router for that, obviously. We're going to need this to set it up. I also need to make a fence for my router. What I'm going to need to do is make a one inch radius on the end of this board and I'm going to use that as a fence when it comes time to come in and route this and I'll show you how to set that up in a minute but right now let's just draw out a one inch radius here and shape that. So to do that I'm just going to take a compass and I have this set to approximately one inch radius and put it out here close to the edge and just come in and use that to draw a one inch radius on here. Alright so this needs to now get shaped on the end here so that it matches that radius. I'm going to start by using a bandsaw, just cut off a lot of this excess here and then I'll shape it on a sander. So here's my router setup. I've got a half inch straight cut bit in there. I've saved the piece that I said to save. That goes on there like that. And then this piece, I cut it off so it's short enough to go onto my table. That's going to go in right there. 
I'm going to need to put some double-sided tape on the bottom of that. That's going to stick right there. That's going to give me the right measurement from my bit. So let's place a little bit of double-sided tape on this guy. And then this gets stuck down to the router table the correct distance from the bit. And then this can be removed. I'm then going to come in with a piece of tape Place it along there so I know exactly where that line needs to be. So what I'm going to use the router for is for cutting those slots in there. And that's where the rollers go for the LMI side bending machine. I'm going to start by marking where these slots need to start and stop. And that's two inches on each side of the center line. So let's go roughly two inches here and let's go two inches here and out here on the edges I want to go a half inch below the center line. So right there and right there. So that's where I want to stop when I do this. I want to start here, come around, cut, start here, come around, cut and stop at my lines. So before I make the cut, I'm going to come in here and mark on my fence approximately where that bit starts and stops. So I have a line there, and a line there, and then when I come in and place this over the top, I know exactly where that bit's going to start cutting. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can raise the bit ever so slightly above the height of the table and come in and just drop that on there and make the cut. I think that's a little dangerous. What I like to do is drop this down below the height of the table, come in here and position this where I need to be, turn the router on, and then ever so slightly come into it just a little bit. I'm going to go in about uh, an eighth of an inch maybe or something just to mark the first cut. I'll come around, stop there, pull it out. I can do the same thing down on this end, drop it back down, come into where I need to be, put it on there, come around. Be extremely careful if you've never used a router before. So you might want to practice this a few times before you do it because the goal is to have an equal distance around the edge here, one inch exactly from the edge. And on this side, I made a little mistake there. It started getting a little bit off. That's because I wasn't tangent to my center line. And this piece of tape is to be used as a reference line as you do that. So you may want to practice it a little bit. Make sure that it's tangent to that center line at all times. Don't start doing it like this as it's coming in, coming in at, a, at an angle there. Keep it exactly like that as you come around. It's very easy to get off. So if that were to happen to you, uh, just put a little Bondo or something in there, some filler, uh, file it or even recut it and you're right back in the ball game. But try and keep these equidistant from the edge. So this blank that I just made can be used as a template to cut out other material. And I'm going to need three other pieces of material. And what I'm going to use is just MDF. I'm going to line these up here where they need to be. And then come in and just trace around them. I'm going to do that on three separate pieces. I'm then going to go to my bandsaw and cut up and leave about an eighth of an inch all the way around this thing. Then I'll use this as a template on there and I'll put that back on my router and flush trim it. So let's make three pieces of MDF that will match this one.
So here's my template and my three pieces that I cut out. Notice I have my waist clearly marked on there. Now the next thing is to use this template, place it on one of these pieces, and use that to route it out. If you do it right, you can do two at once. So what I'm going to do is come in, make sure that it's flush on the bottom, because that's my point of reference down here, and make sure my center line is lined up, and then come in. You could use double-sided tape. You could put a screw in there if you wanted to. You could even pop a little finish nail, whatever it takes to hold this to that. Now when you line these up, make sure you've got your point of reference, and I'm using this as a point of reference where it needs to be and the waist where it needs to be. And since I'm just using double-sided tape, just come in and press that on there like that. Flush here on the edges. So now that I have my three pieces that are going to make my mold cut out, I'm going to come in with my template again over the top of each one individually. I'm going to use a plunge router with a half inch uh, guide bushing and a 5 16 straight cut bit. So I'm going to cut those slots in there where the rollers are going to go. Now if you notice you have any unevenness or a flat area in there, you may want to come over the file and clean that up. This is on the outside where I made that little mistake there. So if this side is smooth, if I just keep it up against there, it should be fine as the router goes around there. So I have my template clamped onto one of the pieces that I've routed out. And I have that clamped to the side of my router table with an edge hanging off, obviously, because it's going to go all the way through there. I'll do it in several passes like that, plunging a little bit deeper on each pass. I'll then turn this around and cut the other side. Then I have two more pieces to go. Now, if you're using MDF like I am, you do want to wear a dust mask. So I'm going to very carefully remove the template. You don't want to break it, obviously. And so one down. I have two more to go. So I'll now go ahead and uh, put the template on those and route those. So here's the three pieces I just cut out. I now have to put them together. There are several ways you can do that. You can come in and just put a bolt through it, pull it up tight. You need to put some spacer blocks in there though. What I'm going to do to make it the same width as what comes with my bender is I've made some spacer blocks that are 1 and 7 eighths inch wide. I'm just going to put them in there like that. And I'm going to put a nail in it to hold it, then I'll come in and screw it. Now the important thing though is that this is completely aligned. So if you use your reference on the bottom, so you can use a square to align the front, and then the, the bench is also the point of reference, so you know they're all flush across the top. But it's very important they're all flush across here as well. So use a square to do that, then come in and put your spacer blocks in. So I'm going to start just by putting one right here in the middle. So while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and 
Put a spacer block back here as well. And I'm also going to put a spacer block up here in the front. And you don't want your blocks interfering with these channels that you put in there with the router. And now while I still can, I'm going to come in and put some screws in here to hold that together. Alright, so now we can put the last piece on. And once again, you want to come in and make sure that this is going to be squared on the front edge here. It's very important. So now you'll need to come in from the top side and try and get a screw down in there the best you can. So now that everything's tagged together, I'm going to come in and put some more screws in to make sure it's going to stay together. And there it is. So here's the finished product. And if you did everything correctly, you should be able to put your rollers on with no problem. And this is now ready to go into the side bending machine. Now when it comes time for you to put your new mold onto the base, you may need to either notch the base down the center here or notch the center piece a little bit here to make it sit properly. Because the way it is now, it's made for the LMI base and it's going to sit a little crooked. Not a big deal. Go ahead and just notch this out or notch this out here. So here's my brand new bending mold that I made for my custom shape for the LMI side bending machine. And it's almost ready to go to work. The only thing I need to do now is make some custom shoes to match my custom shape at the waist. Along with the template blank that I got from LMI, I was also able to get some shoe blanks. And these can then be placed under the template that I made right at the waist where I marked that line and trace the contour onto there. I can then make that shape on my sander, install them on the side bending machine, and I'm ready to bend. With the new shoes made, I can now place them into the bender. I now have a perfectly matched shoe at the waist to match my custom mold. <laughs> 